MMAfighting.com and I am here with the fighting pride of Scotland, Chris Bungard, who has stepped up on short notice to fight a former world champion in Brent Primus. <laughs> How much, I mean, did you, was, was there even a question of that when you got the phone call from Bellator? The, was there a question? Like, I mean, what, did you go, I maybe? Camel. I was actually riding the back of a camel in the Sahara Desert. Don't do it, man, don't do it. All the males out there, don't do it. So no. Are you serious? Yes, it's where my papa's life. Um, Sahara Desert, riding a camel, got the phone out, a few pictures, videos for the gram, as you do. I said, like, I'll fuck the data roaming on. We'll see what we've got here. 120 quid per five minutes of data roaming in Africa. I got robbed. Um, oh, what's this? Jude Samuel, we, we WhatsApp. Quill's out, you want to fight premise. I'm like, whoa, Jesus, easy big fella. The big camel took a hump and everything. <laughs> I was like, Fucking hell, I was like, I need to talk to Brian. Uh, he's like, right, cool, get back to me. Brian's like, why wouldn't we? That's all he wrote, why wouldn't we? I'm like, I'm in. So the whole day for them was just a blur. Couldn't train because I was basically like Baghdad. It was pretty pretty rough, man. Even if you're a Star Wars fan, don't travel seven hour, seven hour north of Tunisia. It's, Is that what you did it for? Because of Star Wars? Yeah, it was like, well, I'd be hot, we travel, but there were Star Wars sets there, man. Um, and then I went to Poland for a couple of days and used the treadmill. It wasn't until I came home that I could really go balls to the ball with defeating this big ballooner there, man. So, but I, it was not a day where the old, old Queely was out. It was made a day with the occasion, the main event and the opponent, like world elite level. Let's see how good he is. Yeah. Like basically clean. It feels, it feels like him. Um this is a win-win for you. As you said there, as you said, Brian said to you, I mean, when I, when I think of him stepping up here, I said, first of all, he saved one of the biggest names coming across from the US. One of the reasons why we all wanted this European series to happen, first of all. And I mean, yeah, but if you come in and win, I mean, what does this say for you? I mean, you're right there. You're knocking on the door of a title shot, right? Yeah. Big Scottish balls, man, honestly. I fear no man. Um, he is good. I know he's good, fucking. Everybody knows he's good. Great grappler, strong, heavy, heavy kicks and heavy punches. Not the best striker, but he got a bit of power on him. Um, but I beat this guy. I'm going to ask for a title shot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Simple as that, man. But uh, my stock's my stock's grown anyway, day by day. But I beat a uh, win over a, a guy like Optimus Primus. Then, then I'm going to call for a title shot. Um, but I wonder how many guys turned it down. I wonder, like, because not all the guys would take that fight in a couple of weeks' notice. Um, and it just proves once again, like, like my, my pro debut, I'm, like I'm ready to shock the world again. Like world champions, jiu-jitsu black belts, Commonwealth judo guys. I've beat them all in the first round. And this guy's no different. Uh, he's just a man at the end of the day. And um, I'm looking forward. To, I'm looking forward to feeling that elite level that he has, elite level. You know. Obviously, Peter Quayley was meant to have this fight first, and and he he had to he fell out of the fight. Did it make it? Does it make it any sweeter for you that like this is a rival of yours? This is a guy that wants to fight you, and now you're taking the biggest opportunity of his career, perhaps. Um, I know he couldn't fight anyway because he was injured, but you have stepped in. Uh, it was probably makes it a, a bit of a more bitter pill to swallow for Peter. I honestly don't. I don't give a fuck about him. I honestly don't. I think I live in his head. I think he wakes up, he's like, oh, thinks about me, looks in the mirror, starts punching the mirror and all that. But, no, I mean, he had, his, he had the chance. He had, he had the chance against Teddy Brazer. He pulled out of that. I fought him, I beat him. Now I'm fighting him. So I'm just, I'm just taking my chances, you know what I mean? Um, he wants to create some sort of fake rivalry. Then that's up to him. It's, it's all mind games with him. I think he plays in his own head a lot as well. With stuff he says and, like... I'm just, I'm just jumping at the opportunity. That's what it is. It wasn't really a dig at Peter. It was the opportunity to take a fight because I was, I was in Romania, I was in Tunisia, I was in Poland, so I wasn't planning fighting in Dublin. Were you offered Peter for this? Like, and you made plans obviously to travel and. Yeah, I was offered Peter, um, like the day after my last fight, and I'm just like, no, I'm in Romania, I'm here, yeah. You know. But I also then Peter was like, see at this date as if he was calling the shots. I'm like, no, fuck you, man. Like, you don't tell me what. Like, just because you won one fight finally, like finish one fight, like. No, I'll, when we fight, I'll decide. So I might be come out to zombie tomorrow just to troll him a wee bit more. Let's get that crowd going. You know what I mean, let's get that fucking crowd up. That would be absolute scenes because the crowd would go wild, right? Like that's the whole thing. Look who we here, like it's not the bold man, it's me. <laughs> but no, like he did, I don't, even, I don't even think about that guy. Um, I'm thinking about this fucking. <sighs> 
look at him, basically clean. You know what I mean? Like that picture they put up yesterday, I just laughed at it. I'm like, isn't he guys even trying? You know what I mean? He's like, but I do set ups and crunches. Like, fuck off, man. I'm in Chandler, you know what I mean? It's like. Do you think they're on some maybe unsavoury supplements? Aye. Like, see if you had to put it in a wee test tube, like a wee bit of their blood, it would melt the test tube, right? It would melt the flare, then it would melt the basement flare. That's, that's, what, that's what my feelings towards that. But it's just a man at the end of the day. I have uh, friends who aren't really into MMA who are huge fans of yours because they're big Celtic fans. Um, and you're getting a lot of love from Celtic at the moment. How good does that feel? Like, as a boyhood fan, it must be amazing. I was in a Celtic view this week. Like, growing up, I bought a Celtic view every week. I had piles of them all in my room, posters. I got a four-page spread. I was on a front cover. I'm like, Jesus, man, obviously... The tie-ins with Celtic and Ireland, like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, Celtic were formed in 1887. Not 1888, a lot of people do think that. Um, t- Is that on the crest, 88, no? But they were formed in 1887, but their first game was 88. But they were formed to help raise money to feed the, the Irish children, um, homeless children. That's why Celtic Football Club was formed. So that's why the ties with the Irish, that's how we look, the, the love for it. So to come over here as fight, obviously I've trained for five years on and off here. Just, I love the people. Like they drink, they like to drink, they like to fight, they like to sing, they like to shag. That, that's right up my street, man. That's right up my street. That's how I feel at home here. I just like the vibe as well. The bars, we've all got live music. I can't wait till Saturday after that. I'm gonna get fucking drink the Guinness like it's going to fashion, man. <laughs> Does that, like, um, I'm sorry for asking again, I know you, uh, about Peter Quill, like, the fact that you have this relationship with Celtic, and obviously a lot of Irish people know you, you have a great, uh, probably, community of Irish people in Scotland as well, that obviously rally around you and support you very heavily. Is that, like, just, like, a thing that you don't really, really do, come over here and be an enemy to the Irish people, so to speak? No, because I feel at home here, I love it here. I've got hundreds of fans here. Um, just because he made up like, a fake rivalry, like, he was messaging me saying like, "Oh, if we do this, we could say it good." And I'm just like, "No, I'm not into that, man." Like I train here, and he's like, and they took it off. Uh, it was just fake, disingenuous kind of. You know? yeah, it was like try to make look, kid on son. Son was up, and I was like, "No, I'm not into that." I, met, I text him like, "I'm not into that." And he's like, "I bet we could make make me money. We we fight in the gym anyway, so why not make money with it?" And I'm like, "Nah, that's that's not me, man. Nah, that's not me." And I love training with the guys. Love coming here, the coaches. Um, my documentary was in his gym, not mean like he filmed all that. Ah, he's like, You're welcome here anytime, brother. Then a week later he's, he's wanting to fight me. It was it caught me off guard. But um no, I mean he comes out, he's still Ash Daly's walkout zombie at the UFC. It's, it's an easy crowd pop to the Irish. See when I put the WWE when they're in like fucking like, the really small towns like Good afternoon in Mississippi. The crowd go wild. It's easy. So you come out to Zombie again in an island. Everybody's got to sing. It's got to generate atmosphere. So you stole that. It was an easy crowd pop. So that's what people love about them. Now I'm going to come out with a sailing tampon. What song am I going to come out to? <laughs> oh, am I going to get that place bouncing? So I can't wait. I can't wait to that energy. But obviously, at the end of that ramp, I need to deal with Optimus Primus out here. Uh, just a final question. I believe you lost lost your grandfather recently. I'm very sorry to hear about that. But um, does that put an extra spe- uh, pep in your step when you're kind of nearly honouring someone's memory? Is that how you feel going into this fight? This week I've, I've showed no emotion. I've been like fucking Dexter, like just waiting for that dark passenger to come out on Saturday. But I've not even thought he, Usually I, I'd think of like positions of maybe being in the fight and I'd get a wee bit of a wee knot in my stomach, like a wee bit of a eye. But this, this week I've not had any, so I'm not even thinking about my pap either. But I know fight day, I'll, 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 I'll put it in there, I'll thank you, and I'll, I'll just like think, what, what, just thank you, him, and just go out and just do the best I can and try and finish this guy in my best day of my ability and just do it for my papa, you know what I mean? And I've got a wee, a wee Celtic hip, hip flask, <clears throat> I've got to fill up with his favourite vodka, and I'll toast in the cage, win, lose, or draw. Amazing, Chris. Thanks so much for this, and thanks for stepping in and saving that fight. Ah, I'm the man. I'm the Bellator man. I'm the Cerrone Bellator. <laughs>